Hey guys, in today's episode, we're going to take Acadia to the dyno yet again, and then we're gonna do some testing because in a few weeks we're headed to Sandblast Rally and we've made a few changes on the car this off season, some of which you've seen, the uh, Riger suspension install video and a few other things. And then we did a few last minute changes, which I'll briefly discuss now. And then uh, you're gonna see us go to the dyno and do some testing. And then we'll uh, tell you about what we found out or if we had any issues when we get back. So a few changes on the car. Um, we got these uh, heat extractor designs from Subaru Motorsports. We took some pictures and kind of rescaled them. So I pulled out the vents on these. We're gonna to try to create a low pressure zone to extract some heat from the engine, uh, try to help with heating issues. And I also, uh, under the hood, I was able to add back the uh, factory ram scoop, which has been missing on this car for a while because of the custom front end. But with a little bit of modification, I was able to add that back. So the filter's brand new in there now. I'm going to pull it off after testing because it's gonna be pretty dusty. Uh, in Alabama where we're going so I can kind of see if this is helping out or not because it was collecting a lot of dust um, other changes we've done so far is we put the Riger suspension on we did the neoprene boots which you saw um, we have messed with the brakes replaced the rear calipers we did all those uh, stainless steel lines um, we put wheel scrapers on which might be able to see down there um, and those clean out the wheels pretty good. Those are like more of an industrial design now. And then we added uh, mud flaps to the outside of the car, more industrial ones. And uh, that's about it. So we're gonna go throw this thing on the dyno and do some testing. And uh, you guys are about to see that clip and then we'll talk about what happened over the weekend. <laughs>
right guys, as you just saw from those clips, uh, testing went great, so did the dyno. We probably won't publish any numbers, it's just not something that you normally do with rally cars. Um, but they don't make that much power anyways because of the turbo restrictor. I will say that it made a ton of torque, which is nice. So, um, just kind of recapping, you saw we found a jump there. So we did that a bunch of times. Tried to get some aerial footage with the small GoPro. Um, the angles weren't exactly right, but you got the point. We tried to do it the best we could. Um, everything else went good. We did have um, not an issue, but this is the first testing that we've been doing with the new built motor. So um, we normally run stock EJ205s or 207s. We just recently moved up to a built 2.5 liter. So just like any built motor, um, it has looser ring tolerances for power, which means that it has a little bit of blow by uh, on this car, even though on all of our higher power builds, we put uh, air oil separators, the IAG ones on. This car did not have anything on it. Um, we have a Killer B uh, AOS on the way to replace our old one but currently we didn't have anything on the car and we ended up getting some blow by and some smoke. So we quickly pulled off this line, which is where we saw some of the oil coming back in. We vented it to a energy drink can, just kind of zip tied out of the way to see how much oil was coming out and kind of do a quick study. We also checked the PCV hoses and uh, sure enough, it was just a little bit of blow by. Almost nothing came out, just a light mist. But just routing that and getting some of it out of the intake track to cut down the smoke while we're driving, um, now it just has a little bit on startup. But we'd already leaked down tested the motor and everything, so everything's good there. It's just a built motor and it has a little bit of blow by. So we are going to replace the Killer B uh, AOS in the corner there. Um, the reason I didn't normally run one on this car is just because of the fire hazard. You never know what... Um, can happen and being that the turbo is right there i stopped using turbo blankets because i didn't want it to hold any liquid when we did water crossings or if we had any leaks um and then that's why we put the extractors on and try to get some of the heat out of here so what i might do is put the aos back on and then get a factory heat shield mocked up to cover that turbo that way if by chance one of the hoses leaked the liquid would hit the um shield and run off instead of hitting the top the hot compressor or the uh, exducer side of the turbo and catching a fire so um, everything went pretty good air filter was pretty clean this thing is working awesome it seemed to stay pretty cool i will have to do a little bit further testing the only thing that i still wasn't super happy with was the brakes um, they're not leaking any fluid they just are pretty spongy um, it's almost like you got to build up pressure after they sit for a minute when the brakes are hot, they work really good. But like if you shut the car off for five minutes and then you go out to do some more laps, the first lap out, the pedal's pretty spongy for a few seconds until it gets hot again. I don't know if that's just um, because these are fixed calipers. I don't know if that's just because as we're going around turns, the brake rotor is pushing against the pistons and kind of opening that gap up some and you got to close the gap again. I know that's an issue for track guys. Um, you don't notice that when you have vacuum assisted brakes, but maybe you do with manual. So anyways, we're going to wrap this video up here. It might've been a little bit shorter. I haven't looked at the final time yet, but testing went great. I think we're about ready for sandblast. We're going to clean the car. I got brand new front fenders to put on for the first time. We're actually going to be replacing some body panels. This is the entire original car from when we built it four years ago. But I got some fresh fenders being painted and uh, we're going to bring this thing in an expo for the U.S. Rally Federation at the end of the month, uh, weekend before Sandblast. We got some other stuff going on in the shop, another six-speed rebuild, and we just got our canopy in for Rally. So I set that up this afternoon. You probably saw it in the corner of the garage earlier. Wanted to make sure that was good. And uh, we'll probably be coming back out with a Forester episode soon, but wanted to interrupt the normal uh, video series of the Forester and give you guys some rally stuff uh, but yeah overall pretty pleased so I will keep you guys posted and then uh, the next episode you'll either see back to Forester stuff or might do a little bit more testing when my dad's in town maybe I can get a reaction from him being in the car for the first time or something till next time see ya